hello everyone. Um, so I'm Ben Fletcher and what I'm going to talk about today is turning policy into a wiki. So what I'm looking to cover is the background and in terms of the challenges, not only the challenges of the, uh, how the policy was in its current state, but also the challenges of introducing a wiki and, and, and getting over a certain mindset. Uh, we also also going to look at why we chose the, the particular content management system, what, what the advantages there were, what its disadvantages were and how we address those, and how we address the concerns of stakeholders in terms of when you talk about turning a policy which is seen as quite a slow moving beast to a wiki which is conceived absolutely differently, how do you, how do you address those concerns? Um, then also our approach to developing the policy, so how we, how the methodology that we chose, because when you're looking at, when you're looking at this uh, giant problem, it's, it's, it can be quite daunting. And then the conclusions, observations, and hopefully that'll be quite an interactive thing, so there'll be a lot of sort of hard truths that our stakeholders feel about uh, media wiki, the semantic media wiki, so you know, we'll put those out there, see what people think about them. So I've been 15 years in the Royal Air Force. Actually, in just over a week, it'll be a 100-year anniversary. Um, and really, you know, I, I, I've been extremely fortunate. I've uh, had a really uh, interesting career. If I could tie down, even you know, whether it's been uh, delivering coalition systems in Afghanistan or dealing with uh, air surveillance systems in the UK, in a nutshell, it's about getting the right information to the decision makers. Okay, so it is about moving that information, making sure the integrity of that information is there for the decision makers to make those operational decisions. So, when I was given policy, I wasn't overly happy, I'll be honest with you. Um, I didn't really join the Air Force to do policy, but I looked at it in the same sort of, as the same problem. It is, it is about getting the right information to the right people, and how can we best do that? Um, It was also that I was probably the sixth person in about five years who was trying to address this problem. It was a complex problem. It wasn't easy. And we really, what we wanted to do was go back to basics. You know, why was a policy struggling to keep pace with ICT? Um, so if I just talk briefly about how the policy worked. So as the, uh, as the JSP 604, as this is called, the Joint Service Publication, this was the defence manual for ICT. And this is the defence manual uh, for ICT. So it is about what um, delivery inside the services or external contractors have to adhere to for ICT to be delivered to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the military. And the way that initially this was done was uh, we had a, a defence network. So in, in old school terms, we had a network and you had to make sure that you'd adhere to the policy or you were not allowed to join that network. So in simplistic terms, what would we had a business requirement come in, you'd have the architects, the case officers who were the people who assisted the delivery teams to uh, adhere to the accreditation requirements and the delivery teams, and they would work together to understand that business requirement, and then what we had were network joining rules. And these were specific rules that you had to adhere to, and if you didn't, you, you were not allowed to release that capability. And this formed a uh, document, which was a technical release readiness assessment, so, and it was risk management. So, so you'd have to adhere to a certain rule, certain aspects, and there would be a red, green, and amber in terms of have you, have you adhered to that? Are we, are we accepting that risk to allow this capability to be deployed on the defence network? The way we wanted to... We saw a couple of flaws with this straight away. Um, one was that it was difficult for project managers, the case officers, to really understand their project timescale. What's the resources that they would have to put against the release of this capability? So the first thing we wanted to do was work out the agreed evidence along, and what we chose was a generic project cycle. 
uh, project phases. And the reason we chose generic project phases is because we could then map that against whether it be Agile, whether it be CADMID, whether it be PRINCE2. So we didn't want to tie down to a methodology. What we wanted to do was to create an open framework where we could map it across. Um, so phase one was understanding that. The other key thing was understanding who the risk arbitrator was. So who was the person who wanted that evidence and you know, so, so you could go to them and say, look, we're not, we won't be able to de deliver that evidence. Are you willing to accept that risk as the risk arbitrator? And they could say, you know, no way, and that would escalate further because, there's, of course, there's an operational imperative sometimes to deliver capability. So we have to match the operational perspective in terms of why this capability is required over the security risks or whatever other risks there are in delivering a capability. I've put phase one and phase two because... We're dealing with phase one at the moment. What we've also done is changed it to ICT joining rules instead of network joining rules because we've transitioned. We now purchase services. We procure services. So it's not about joining a network anymore. It's about the procurement of a service and the aspects of that, of, of that service and how that's delivered. So if we're, um, if, we're buy, if we're purchasing a cloud service, you know, what are the rules that we have to adhere to or make sure that we align with? The phase two bit is what, what we'd ideally like to do is to have that single, uh, that single document of evidence that is following the, the uh, growth of that capability as it's being delivered. So you've got a, a complete history of why that capability is delivered, what the conversations were, the concerns were, and so on. That content management system in terms of tracking that body of evidence hasn't been decided yet. That's going to be, next, that's going to be the next phase. You know, my card's on the table. I clearly think you know, MediaWiki would be a very good solution. There's other benefits in terms of SharePoint using Flow, in terms of uh, getting those documents to the right people. There, there's, so that's, that's further discussion. In terms of the priority of tasks, the key thing we wanted to do was there were a lot of documents out of date and we weren't quite sure the history of them. So we wanted, to, we wanted to make sure we tied down who the authors were, who owned those documents, who could we point at and say, that's out of date, that needs to be updating, or what do you mean by that? Can you clarify that further? So really, you know, and was that content still, still valid and relevant? The, initially, the 604 with the network joining rules became a very... It had a very good reputation in terms of it absolutely ensured that what we deployed on the defense network um, was safe, robust, and, and, and meet, met, meet the specifications. It became a victim of its own success, so everybody wanted to add rules. And the problem with that is then what happened was we were starting to delay the delivery of capability because we didn't people, what I'd call is stovepipe thinking. So they were thinking, and they were doing absolutely the right thing. They were saying, this is really important that this rule is there because, um, because in, the, in the past somebody hasn't done it and, and, and we've seen that effect. But what we didn't understand was the impact of introducing that rule. So what, what's the, so if, if, if a project's made up of cost, time, and, and functionality, what was, the, what was the impact of cost and time? Were they really worth it? In, was it really justified to add that extra, uh, extra process within it? Um, the hardest thing to understand within the JSP 604 in its, current, in its current state was the impact of change. If I change this one document, what's, what's the ripple effect it has throughout this document? And that was, that was one of our greatest challenges and that stovepipe thinking I've talked about. But if we focus on anything, the key thing was to speed up delivery. Every change that we do within this policy, the first question we ask is, how does that speed up delivery? And I'm not saying st step away from, from, the, um, from, the security, from, from the security or step away from these other things, but we need to speed up delivery. That is absolutely key. We need to get operational capability to frontline troops. You know, that is what this policy is about in a nutshell. So how do we speed up that delivery? So, the reason it was so complex was it was 2,000 pages, 90 PDFs of documents, and you had to read 
Really, you had to read the whole lot to understand the interrelationship between it. There was missing information, there was links out of date, there was, you know, what we've all experienced <laughs> in terms of when you, have your, when you have your content within PDFs. So, it was... You'd have to spend probably a year, a year and a half to really go through them, really understand them, really understand those interrelationships, and then you'd have to try and work out how to change, you know, what to change and what that impact's going to have. An incredibly complex, um, incredibly complex problem. And really, well, it'd be no surprise, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be here, we chose MediaWiki as the uh, content management system. And these were the advantages that we could see straight away. The history, seeing where the document was, because of course somebody may contract against that policy at a certain point. So straight away we can tell them what, the, what that document was uh, at that certain date when that contract was signed. Um, open source means we have the ability to look at the code to make sure that we're content that there's nothing nefarious going on. Um, the single source of information, you know, this, the ability to transclude information is absolutely phenomenal. To be fair, I didn't know what transclusion meant before I ever started for MediaWiki, and I use it on a daily basis just to try and um, show off. But, you know, that ability to, to have that single source of information and use it multiple times is an absolute, is an absolute um, killer feature. Um, yeah. Having the ability just to Google something with such a vast community, is, it makes all the difference. It saves us time having to write the manuals. Our, th our key thing about the manuals was don't write it if it's already there. Only write the things that are unique to our wiki in terms of the manuals. Um, Multi-platform, obviously. Low skill gap, although I will put a high skill gap and we'll talk about that in a sec. And also, you know, I had good friends in NATO who were... Yeah, <laughs> who were very helpful when I was in that uh, beginning um, learning curve, as it were. And, and actually, the argument that NATO are using it and NASA are using it are used constantly. You know, that, that's, that's a winning argument straight away. So the, it's, it's, it's very encouraging when you've, when you've got, you know, str strong, strong organizations like that um, sort of converging to the same solution. Um, We've talked about security, well, you know, the ability to segregate, uh, segregate users. Now, actually, for our wiki, the, the wiki will be eventually published on the, on the internet. It is supposed to be out there for uh, industry to be able to have a look at and understand what they, have to, what they have to adhere to. So, in this sense, it's, it's, not, it's not required. But, if phase two, where I talk about uh, the tracking and the following of capability, which will be capturing risks and all those sort of things, that's something we would have to keep um, separate. So, and also, when you've got uh, military, civil servants, contractors, there's also lines of segregation there as well that you have to, you have to think about. So there is, you know, there is certainly this, um, a justification for working out a, an agreed way of segregating users. Um, the, you know, it's, 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 it's no coincidence that, that Microsoft give, um, give out Office free to schools. You know, that they've created a generation who pick up Microsoft Word when they're older and straight away they can use it. You know, there's a lot of people who've got a lot of good things to say towards the policy who really struggle with editing on a wiki. And we need to address that. We want greater contributors. We need to make it, you know... Um, Visual editor, I'm not, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I don't particularly like it. I quite liked going back to the, you know, the wiki pages and just typing like that. But it's not about us. You know, we're, we're converted. We need to get the next generation on board. Um, and the reputation of the wiki is, is something, again, I will talk about. So, policy. Static, you know, quite rigid wiki. I don't know what it is about um, human psyche, but um, we do always... Well, first of all, we hate change. That's absolutely given. And secondly, we always remember the bad things. You know, everybody tells you how horrific the internet is or how, you know... And everybody, you know, 
I, daily basis is probably a bit of an exaggeration, but certainly on a weekly basis, you know, every three or, four, three or four days, you know, I'm asked, how can you possibly put policy into a wiki? Somebody can just vandalise it and so on. And we were discussing this last night, what we need to have is killer answers for that. Because we all know, you know, you, what you're doing is you're taking the Wikipedia example where you can have anonymous editing. You know, I can see everybody who makes a change and, you know, the other thing is, I'd be seriously worried about my organisation if somebody's going around vandalising the wiki. So I think we'd have a far greater problem than that. It actually, uh, I think if somebody put it, it would highlight probably greater issues that we probably needed to know about anyway. But it's, you know, it, the, we, need, we need to address that because wiki, I think, has, unfortunately, the name wiki has a poor reputation that needs to, that needs to be addressed. Um, So, what I want to talk about now, so, so you know, I've convinced, I've convinced the chain of command that a wiki is where we should go, and I've also shown them the advantages of semantic media wiki and how we can actually start to database our knowledge and put it forward. So this is, um, it's, it's quite a good diagram, it's a very good diagram. It's from the, uh, a joint defence publication, and it's, it's called the Information Management Bridge, as you, well, as you can read. And, We've got, this vast, we've got this vast policy and you know, what we're talking about is we want, we want to be in this space. We want to enable decision makers to make decisions. So it talks about the infrastructure, obviously, we, we understand that. And then this managing of information and the exploitation and so on and, and really, so it's, it's implying that you need to get your information management right and obviously the infrastructure and all those sort of things. But I, I actually think that's the wrong approach. And I'll tell you about this bridge. Does anybody know this bridge? Yeah, fourth rail bridge. So when they used to paint it, they would start at this end, and it'd take them about four years, and they'd get to this end. And guess what they had to do? They had to start again. So, you know, and then the, ter the term is, you know, it's like painting the fourth rail bridge. And that's what I think, um, sadly, actually, science has ruined this. They've now developed a 15-year lasting paint. It's quite upsetting. But it's still a good term. It's still a good term. <laughs> Still, still, a, still a good uh, sort of analogy. Um, what I'm saying is, start at this end, okay? So start at what do your decision makers need? What is the first thing? What's the most prioritise the things they need? Start at this end and say, right, you need this. That breaks down into this database scheme or whatever you want to call it, and then gets to go here. Don't start trying to boil the ocean, paint the fourth row bridge. You'll never finish. Get here. This is where you are adding value to the organization. So what is it you need? Right. We can do that. What's the next thing you need? Well, actually, we've done half of that the first one. So to me, it's, it's don't get stuck in that space is, is, is basically. And, and, and you know, I've seen tragic, <laughs> tragic situations where people who are trying to do the right thing with information management, creating these slightly draconian rules on how you manage information. And they're, 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 the concept is correct, you know, if you've got it all, then we can search it and all that sort of thing. But actually what it starts doing is it impacting the decision makers because they're having to adhere to these draconian rules without actually people thinking about, you know, what are we trying to achieve? We want to be at that sharp end enabling those decisions. Quick win. Yeah, absolutely. So it's agile. What's that, sorry? Yeah, absolutely. So, so perfection's the enemy of good. I mean, we say, you know, good is good enough. You know, let's get out there. Let's, uh, let's deliver in an agile, agile way. Let's get those prototypes. So I talked about right at the beginning, the most important thing we needed was we needed to understand who the stakeholders were within the, within the, within the document. So straight away, we created little info boxes. I know you'll laugh at my, you know, my, my basic attempts at semantic media, wiki, you know, but the first thing was, you know, who owns that page? You know, who's the author? Who's the owner? So we can go and point to them and say, look, you haven't updated this and so on. You know, do you actually mean this? So we had people that we could actually um, nail down and, and say. From that, we built the stakeholder pages. So, and this is absolutely ki critical because 
like most organisations, we're in constant, we're constantly changing. You know, we're looking at how we can reorganise, reorganise the business. Straight away, we can say, well, if you get rid of, if you get rid of this team, they're responsible for this. You know, that is your decision, but please understand the impact. So we straight away could now show the impact of change to the business. They, as a handover, they could see straight away what they're responsible for within the policy and understand those areas as well. So it, 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 it benefited in both ways. Um, I talked about the project plan, so what we started doing was um, you know, mapping it. We wanted to be, try and be as agile as possible, and then what we could do was relate what's those, what's those, the, those bits of evidence that you have to produce when who is the, who's the arbitrator of that risk. So straight away, they've got a better idea of the resources they require, one, they, what they need to produce, and when they need to produce it. I talked about um, the policy becoming a victim of its own success in terms of people adding these rules and, and, and not really understanding the impact of cost and, and time to the delivery. We identified 60 documents that people would have to produce for the delivery of capability. Now, what we started going, going back to and saying is, do you actually require that document or what is it you're asking for within that document? And so what we started building was a body of evidence. And actually you found a lot, of the, a, lot of the, a lot of the rules, a lot of the risk arbitrators were asking for the same thing, just in different words. So, we had to, so we're now looking at how we um, absolutely nail down our taxonomy. So we're asking for the same thing, uh, the evidence produced, and then we have this single page of, you know, this single document which is about the capability and all of that evidence captured on there with the discussions there. So you've got, you understand why this was delivered, why risks were taken, why decisions were made. So, you know, I come from, you know, cyber, I come from a cyber security background and we've got, you know, the, this, it always comes back to this, the CIA triangle, you know, confidentiality, integrity and uh, availability. And we have to be really, really careful that we're not burdening the project managers so much that we don't ever deliver a capability. You know, so how do we get that? I'm not saying release a system that is dangerous to, you know, to, to other systems, but let's understand that risk, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to better understand and articulate that risk of capabilities being brought into the military. We're absolutely key for this. It's, we're throwing things out there, agile delivery, Get it out there. See what people say. You can't. You can spend too long speculating on 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 what should be delivered. Get it out there. Let people throw spears at it. But actually, if they're throwing spears at it, they're showing an interest. So it means they care. So now you've got another stakeholder who's going to help you develop this and drive it forward. Change process is actually quite difficult. You know, you can change. You know. You could change one word, you could put no, not, or something, you know, and it could change the whole context of that page. So um, it, it, it's something that we're, we're sort of trying to grasp, but we've tried to break it down in terms of minor changes are just within, just changing the wording or whatever, the grammar within, within the page, or if the teams have changed names. Significant change um, is basically you're making a change in that page, but it has an impact on at least another page. So therefore, we want a larger number. So uh, we called ourselves the curators. I was very keen to make myself called a curator, so I didn't have to write any of this. I just design it. I let other people write policy. Um, so day-to-day -day business, we want to give them mission command. We don't want to be. We don't. You know, we don't want to be holding their hands the whole time. But once a change starts stepping outside of their, of their area, they need, they need to start telling us. If it's a major change, i.e. you're completely redesigning that page, um, what we do is we create a draft page, allow those, uh, so, so we put it in a draft namespace, we allow all those discussions to go on there, we have a release process, and then we'll do a, uh, a large changeover. I have to say, analytics. Uh, so, 
some of the people we had to convince were government digital services. Actually, they were, they were fully on board. They, they, they liked the fact that we were, we were looking at, at other technologies for the hosting of uh, policy. And, uh, you know, we're getting uh, contacted probably, uh, you know, on a weekly basis by other, by other, policy, ask, uh, by other policy owners asking us how, uh, how we're doing it and, and, and what's the, how we're overcoming some of the challenges. Analytics is key because we need to quantify the evidence. We believed there were a lot of people going on our pages, but we also wanted to understand how people were going through the document. It, it, on the front page, you see I, I had, I had uh, I'll actually, That took me ages. I know it's only four buttons, but that took me ages to work out because, first of all, we had lots of links on the pages, but I wanted to narrow down. If, if you think that people only ha can only, can only memorise seven things, you know, the average human can only memorise seven things, the rule is you shouldn't have more than seven things there. We wanted to consider all the stakeholders and work out which way they're going to go into the document. You know, it's trying to make it as simple as possible for the users just to, just to basically drill down into that information. But this, this was telling us how people's, how people's, their route through the wiki, how long they spent on certain pages. Really, really uh, useful. So, observations, the controversial bit. Okay. So, some of these are my opinions, some of these are stakeholders' opinions, but this is, these are opinions that are, have been put out there. Okay? Style. It, it, a lot of people, when you're trying to sell a wiki to, to your bosses, it could do with looking a bit slicker. You know, I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I, I think it looks a bit Microsoft XP. You know, it's, it's, and some people like the way it looks, some people, I think they could, style could certainly, it, it's a sad thing, but aesthetics are a major, a major factor in people choosing capability. It shouldn't be, but it is. Um, editing, as I've said before, we need to capture, we're asking people to spend their time giving us their knowledge. We need to make it as easy for everybody as possible. Right. <laughs> We need to have some killer answers to, can't anybody come up and wipe off all your data? You know, these standard questions. <coughs> Semantic media wiki is really, really difficult to understand. And we need to, it took me a long time to really understand the benefits of Semantic media wiki. Now I'm blown away. It's absolutely phenomenal. And, and I show demonstration pages and so on. But it's not doing itself any favors because it is not selling itself as, as well as it could. Um, visualizing information. So people are getting lost in our, in, in our wiki. You know, the ability just to have what page links, you know, a vi an easy way of doing it. I know there's lots of ways of doing it, but an easy way to show where you are within the document and how you got there and what's, you know, who are the parents, who are the child's. You know, something simple would be, would be again, absolutely... Uh, um, very useful. Right, what are the unique selling points of MediaWiki? What are the unique selling points of Semantic MediaWiki? We need to get that information out there. We need to put that in frequently asked questions. So, somebody comes up to me, I've got 10 seconds to sell to them what Semantic, you know, what it does, you know, let's have it. Between us, you know, there's lots of wordsmiths, let's come up with some really catchy, in business speak, how are we going to sell this? Uh, developer environments. The next generation, you want people just to be able to jump onto something. It is way too complicated to download stuff, to download the extensions. We all accept that. It's, um, it's some, if we want people, if we want people to get, become more stakeholder, you know, the saying is for every pair of hands, you get a free brain, okay? So the more people we get just playing around with it on sand pits and everywhere, the more people we will have starting to contribute. We all understand the benefits of um, increasing the uh, organization. Uh, recipes, you know, there are standard things. We've actually put them so that that uh, website, the Enterprise Media Wiki, we've, we, we started putting them down. Things like meeting, meeting records.
things like um, bug trackers, issue logs, those sort of things. We can create those little recipes. How do you create them? Bang, straight away, you've got a 10 minutes instruction of how I can now build that onto my wiki. You know, let's start building best examples and showing people and just giving them step-by-step -step guides of how you deploy that onto your, onto your system. Because straight away, you're giving them a prototype to show to their bosses. Uh, yeah, bundle extensions. You know, just give me something double-click install, done. You know, if you want, build it around business personas. If it's an engineering company, if it's a marketing company, it doesn't matter. But let's put it all together and just sell it out there. Security layers. Um, the more I think about security layers, because we had a, you know, a lively discussion about it yesterday, it is really complicated because it's the aggregation of data that can increase the classification of, of, a, of and that is very difficult to understand. So the more I think about splitting a wiki, the more difficult I think that is. And I think actually you need to talk about deploying separate wikis and having a, uh, and blocking those links in between. I don't know, okay, but amongst us, the solution is in this room. So what we need to do is to put a white paper out of this is our solution to security layers. There is absolutely a business case for that, and if we can put forward how what we think is the best solution, that gives that gives that enables people to say this is how we would do it in this in this circumstance. We talked about crossing the chasm, okay? Media wiki, so, so I don't know if you've seen this, it's, uh, it, it is about how you jump from, from, uh, from being a, uh, just a, a, jumping to be a mainstream capability that people use. And they talk about the 14%. So you wanna get past the early adopters and that's when you know, you're into the money if you're a business or so on. So you're trying to jump that 14%. So, and I've put, just because, we're open, just because it's open source doesn't mean it, can't, it shouldn't behave like a proprietary software. Shouldn't look at how it can market itself. Shouldn't look at, there's nothing wrong with looking at other capabilities and saying, they do that well, how could we do that? You know, how could we replicate that? There are some things that the media wiki is not meant to do, but there's other things you go, actually we could do that, we could probably do that better. Um, Real life examples we've talked about. Let's let's you know. Let's showcase. Let's showcase the capability. Let's use this website. Send it out there. Get the prototypes out there. We we're talking about creating a um, a fake company, you know, and 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 just you know all all their reports and so on, just so you can go through it and understand it. And let's address the fake news. You know, let's have those answers to those questions in terms of, you know, is, you know, can anybody come up and and delete everything and so on? Is my stuff safe? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. We've all heard it. You know, let's 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 create those answers to it. So that is it from me. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Sorry. Peter. Yep. <laughs> Am I first? Yep. Go for it. Okay. Good. Oh, well, um, I, I like your remark about the recipes. Um, discussed it with a couple of people uh, over the days, um, and uh, especially Ike, uh, who is not here today, uh, he came up with uh, some very good advice. And I, I agree that that if if you install the, the wiki from the box, you end up with that single white page, and and then you have to do something to create. And there are a lot of use cases, a lot of proven use cases that people create over and over again. And mm -hmm. if it would be easier to install those as a basic functionality on top of your new fresh wiki install, it would make it a lot easier for people to get started with, the, with, the, with um, uh, making it a tailor-made solution for their own, for their own good. So things like having a document management system or having a list of events and a calendar yeah. or having a way of gathering personal data and creating contact lists and, and mailing lists or you name it. There yeah. are a couple of those basic functions that, that people might want to have in their wiki and if we can find a way to to make those easily accessible and easy to install on a 
blank wiki, uh, that would be a great feature, I think, especially for people who are relatively new in, yeah. in, in, the, in the game and who haven't built up their own experience in the wiki markup yet. And, and I came with a, a interesting suggestion that all it takes is to create the definitions for a set of properties, forms, and templates and, and categories, and, and you can easily import them in your wiki as an XML file. So if, if you could build a, a, a website that hosts a couple of those examples and, and, and a user could download them uh, in XML format and import them into their wiki, they're, they're set to go. So that is relatively easy. The only thing you need to, need to do is, is to build those recipes and, and, and make them, make them yeah, offer them to, uh, to the, to the yeah. public. So, so uh, we would, absolutely, and, and I think that's where you know, the Enterprise Wiki website, um, we've, we've discussed that, we should put down our suggestions for recipes and then prioritize them, all agree on a few, start, start creating them. So it almost becomes the app store you know, for media wiki. Exactly. So, so if, if there is any interest of other people doing this, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to set up a, uh, a, a little working group or, or a platform where a, lot of, uh, a, comp a couple of people can exchange ideas about this and, and we can make this available in, uh, in the um, open domain. Uh, well, uh, I, I saw that you, 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 have, you had a page owner and a page author. Yeah. I mean, uh, my experience with, with legal people is that they are very, you know, they want everything to be casted in concrete and not to be touched anymore, and it has to be perfect, unfortunately. Um, so for them, uh, a wiki is like it is always flowing around and it's never... Uh, I, I was wondering, do you also use an extension of, of, of closing, uh, making a page not edible or uh, no, so flagged revisions or, or something like that? So first of all, I don't want to stop people going around and correcting grammatical mistakes or so on. So we've said, absolutely do that. If you're not the author, if you're not being delegated north of that page, you're not to change the content of that page. And, and, and that's, I mean, it's a verbal thing. You know, I don't, I don't want to get... The administration of trying to lock them down and so on, I don't think, is just, I don't think the, the workload justifies the risk. You know, every day I look at the change logs, you know, and, and I think I was, we had, I had a discussion with the NASA guys last night, and they said in six and a half years they haven't had a problem. So it, there's a perception that could be an issue, but I don't think there is that issue. Anyone else? Oh, thank God. You mentioned analytics. Do you guys have something separate installed that? Yeah, um, um, I've forgotten the name. Is Memento? Mem uh, Mamo Mamoto, I think it's. I, I can't remember. It's. It's. It was Pyrrhic before, and it's trained. It's changed names recently, but yeah, that was. That's the one we installed. It's uh, watching and looking at like click-through links for like where users are going or. Yeah. Goes. So so the, uh, to me, the most powerful feature is understanding the route that people, people go through the wiki. Um, that's because it, it, start, it, it makes you wonder why have you gone down that path? What, what's, what's led you down that way? So um, yeah, uh, but there's lots of other things where the hits are, how often it's hit, and, 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 and what pages are most popular. And more importantly, what pages are never visited? And why? You know, let's get rid of it then. OK, I think no more questions. Excellent. Thank you very much.